Hi everyone, so we're going to navigate to Earth Data Search uh, and search for the EcoStress data set. And then we're going to just filter it down, adding some uh, time and uh, data types. That way we can get exactly what we're looking for. So we know there was a fire event around this time in January of 2025 in the uh, Los Angeles area. So we're just going to go ahead and highlight uh, that time range here. And then again, we're going to look for some cloud optimized geotiffs or COGS. All right, and then we're going to click our data set that we're looking for. And I know I'm looking for something in a specific area, so just navigate the map viewer over, <clears throat> zoom in, and then we'll uh, set a bounding box. Since we know we're like the general area of where this uh, event occurred. So here goes my bounding box. And then just take a look at some of the data sets that populate. And then looking at some of the thumbnail images, uh, you can kind of see where it lies and if it will be an area of interest to you. Because some of it does overlap, but not always directly. So we'll go here and add our data sets to our download uh, folder. And again, you do need an Earth Data login account to uh, download some of this data. It can be difficult uh, looking at all the data sets, just trying to make sure we get you know, our areas of interest for this short example. So again, looking at our date and then time and our slice uh, data. And then again, once you hover over a data set and click it, you can see it in the map view, it's showing you where it lies and if it'll be of interest to you. So we're going to go ahead and download our uh, couple of data files here and just hit the download button. It'll take you to the page and just show you what it's like. I'm actually not going to download in this video because I already have the files, but just to give you an idea of what it does look like. And when you go in, you'll see all these different variables and you're going to go ahead and want to look at land surface temperature. Uh, more information about each of these variables can be found on the data sets landing page, which is also available through the Earth data, set, Earth data search uh, interface. So once you have downloaded your files, you can go ahead and navigate to uh, ArcGIS Pro and make a folder connection to where you have those files stored. I have them in this EcoStress folder. Once you have that folder set up, uh, it doesn't have to be in the same location, but what you're going to do next is create a file geodatabase. So we're going to head to the folder, we'll right click, make new file geodatabase. And this is what it would look like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it right now. Okay, so we have our file geodatabase. From there, we want to create a mosaic data set. So we do that by right clicking on our file geodatabase, moving to new mosaic data set. And we can call this LST for land surface temperature. That is the variable we're going to be looking at today. Um, and then next, we will navigate to our coordinate system. I will be using WGS 1984. <clears throat> and then here's just some more stuff that we don't have to worry about these settings down. So you'll run that. And what will happen is it will spit out this uh, mosaic data set here. So we have our file geodatabase, we have our mosaic data set. Next is to get these TIFF files into this mosaic data set. And we'll be doing that by click, right clicking and adding rasters. This can also be gotten to through the geo processing pane and you can search for it, add rasters to mosaic data set. So it has our mosaic data set. Uh, there is no 
COG or like cloud optimized GeoTIFF or TIFF uh, raster type. So we'll be using a raster data set as our raster type and we're using files. <clears throat> so we will navigate to the folder and as you can see, it's popping up empty here. It says it's looking for text files and you know CSVs. Uh, we're actually navigate to all types and you'll see our TIFF files populate along with our file geodatabase. So we'll select all of our files <clears throat> and go ahead and add those over. And looking at some of the advanced options, these are maybe some things you want to consider depending on what you are doing, like enabling your pixel cache if you need improved performance or like faster display times, things of that nature. And then raster processing, like calculating the statistics, we'll turn that on. It's just three, so it'll be very fast for this, you know, demonstration. But you can do this after as well. And then your post mosaic processing if you need overviews or thumbnails and things of that nature. Um, so you'll go ahead and run that. And then once it's run, you will, you know, see your rasters in your mosaic data set. And then you'll go ahead and add it. And when you originally add it, it may look something like this, where you can kind of see, like, it looks kind of buggy and all overlay. Well, actually, to start, it will be more uh, black to white originally. So it may look like this to start. And then, so go ahead and head to Symbology. We'll go in. Uh, I chose Inferno, uh, dealing with heat, you know, land service temperature. So uh, I felt like it was a good representation. And again, so you can kind of see it's overlapping. So what we'll want to do to fix this is we'll want to build our multi-dimensional info. But to do that first, we must first get into the attributes of the attribute table of this uh, mosaic data set. And in the attribute table, you will see, you know, all our files <clears throat> and things. So what we'll do here, we need to add two fields. Go ahead and click add. And the two fields we will be adding are STD time and a variable field. Make sure this STD time field has a date uh, data type and the variable could just be text. So I'm going to click out and discard my change. You will be saving your changes here, but I've already done this, so I'm going to discard my changes. Uh, once those fields are added, you'll see them here. You're going to go want to go to your STD time, uh, right click and calculate it. <clears throat> I have this function already in here to actually strip the date time from the file name. A lot of uh, TIFFs typically have this structure where you'll be able to find the date time in the actual file name itself. So then we'll want to call that. <clears throat> function here format date and we want to run it with the file name which will be our actual name field like so and then you will go ahead and push ok or and then it would run and populate these fields for you as you can see I have them populated here and then something similar you would do for the variable field or I also did it in the product name both will work if you don't want to add a new variable to your, let's say you have too many fields or something like that, you don't want you have a blank one that's, you know, you can just utilize it. <laughs> so what we'll do here is right click, calculate field again, and then here we just had it set to LST, land service temperature is our variable name. So just to recap, we've added the time value to each slice of data. We've also added a variable. And then from there, what we're going to do is go ahead and go back to our geoprocessing tool and we're going to search for build uh, multi-dimensional info. We're going to select our data set. It's letting you know this is a variable field, what variable we would like, LST. You can also go into the product name, same thing, LST, and you could say land surface temp, something like that. And then here, what we want to do is our dimension field is time because the dimension that we'll be stepping through is a time slice. So you just give it a description like so, time. You go ahead and run that and populate. <clears throat> and then what you will see is this tab actually populate here on your mosaic data set. And what that had done has put these two multi-dimensional infos together. So you'll have your variable and your SCD time. So then that will allow you to select a single slice instead of having all three displayed at once. And then you can kind of step through and view each slice. 
And then this can kind of show you the change over time. As you can see, this is high heat values indicating there may have been a fire in this area. <clears throat> and then, you know, as you can see, as it changing, as it cools down, and then, you know, another fire in another area. And it just allows you to highlight some of that phenomenon from, you know, the satellite data. But let's say we want to get pixel values or pixel returns for a specific slice. What we'll have to do next is uh, set the mosaic properties, to ensure that the time is on and that we're using the correct field. This can be done by going to the properties and doing it, but it may not save directly. I have to check on that, but what we can do is run it here and it will be set to that mosaic and it will load the image properties, tell you what is allowed and for the compressions, which can, again, make things faster on loading and caching and things of that nature. I always come down and check the order field by time, because that's how we're going to order the fields that we have. And then we'll go down here and check some more of the properties to uh, the catalog item properties to double check that it is reading um, the time values correctly. It's, you only have one, but if you had a start and end, you would want to make sure that these are correct and then that's using time. You go ahead and run that, <clears throat> and once that is run, and let's say you have an individual slice here, you can go ahead and explore and try to get some of the uh, pixel values uh, returning. As you can see, the pixel value is returning here, LST. You are getting your pixel value return for your variable, and the service pixel, we can go put another spot. Let's see, maybe somewhere darker. As you can see, the pixel value is 15. And then while you have all of these data sets together, we'll go ahead and unfilter so all three will again populate. But the next step that we're going to go do is uh, go to our temporal profile and our multi dimensional. And <clears throat> what this will allow us to do is look at change over time. I'll go ahead and close my field here, give us more of a, a so we have all three uh, overlaying here, and then what we want to do, you can go to create chart here, it's like temporal profile. You can also go to your multi-dimensional temporal profile, and we can select a point of interest. Let's go with something like this, maybe. Oops, I did not select my tool here. Maybe we can select something like that. And it could just show you the change of the land surface temperature over time. And maybe this could have been two separate or singular. It could have been two fire events because you can see it spiked up and then kind of dipped and went back up. Maybe something happened and re-sparked or something like that. Uh, we can also check it maybe up here. And you can kind of see the big drop off and the image that captured. If there's no data, you'll see that it will not you know, post it because you know these are slices, so all the slices do not directly overlap. 